another edition of a virtual KSO show. I mean, actually a debate series this time. We're going to, me and DY, Derek Young and Grant Flanders, we're going to go at each other for a little fun uh, back and forth action. How are you doing, DY? I'm good. Uh, and hopefully on the next one, because we'll probably do this for every Sunday for our all of our YouTube subscribers. We'll make this uh, feature free every week on YouTube. Uh, and hopefully the next one we'll have Dale be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, next week we should see Dale possibly next Sunday. Should be getting back from his his, his much needed vacation. Um, I hope he's still doing well. You know, yeah. the has been decent in Kansas at least. Yeah, I think he's still getting better, and that's all we can hope for. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah, this debate series. I think since you know it's you and I, we have our we have our opinions on things. I think it's only fitting. Let's talk a little basketball. Let's talk about the signees. A huge class of signees. But I think we have a couple of guys maybe in mind that we would think are going to be the best for K-State. And, you know, who, who, who is going to have the best career at K-State? That is the question. That's what we are debating. And first, let's pick who we're taking. I mean, you have a number of options. Let's go through the list first, D.Y. You got Luke Kazoop. You got seven-footer Davion Bradford. You got Siri Lewis. Siri Lewis. You got uh, Selton Miguel. You got Nigel Pack. I mean, if you want to count Casey as you probably can't, but um, he is a newcomer. And then do we have one more? Am I missing Carlton one? Carlton Lingard. Carlton Lingard. There we go. Enough, that, the last newcomer. So, seven, I mean, six, seven you can pick from. I think I already know where you're going, though. So, go ahead with your pick. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go with Nigel Pack as having the best career. Um, I think just f- from a combination of being pretty ready to play, uh, going to probably be in a role for Bruce Weber that is pretty conducive to numbers and production, uh, kind of being, you know, that guard that uh, probably will share a lot of uh, usage, kind of like the way Barry Brown did, for example. Um, so I think he's in a role that will probably balloon his production, balloon his potential. I think he's someone that can probably play right away. So that'll help, you know, statistically over his career have – have a pretty good one just because I think that he'll be, uh, uh, you know, quite a contributor for all four years. And then when you think – and then consider just how good he might be able to be even at, as a finished product. I think that combination just lends me to think that Nigel Pack um, is likely the best answer here for this particular uh, question in terms of who has the best career because that's a four-year question and not necessarily – a one or a two year question. If it's a one or a two year question, then I might lean towards someone like Selton Miguel because I think just because of his physical maturity and mental maturity and makeup and um, just where he is at basketball wise from a skill set standpoint, uh, he's probably the most ready to play right now of all the, the high school players that they did sign just because of, of what he can provide, you know, from day one in Manhattan, I, and he's almost 20 years old already. So that's another a fact that kind of goes into it for me. I think Celta Miguel may be the best right away of, of at least the, the high schoolers that they've added. But over you know the course of his career, I think Nigel Pack probably can exceed what, mm-hmm. uh, what Celta Miguel may be able to provide. But I think those are probably – you know, the two cornerstones of the program, the next three to three to four, maybe five years, probably just four, of course. Nope. Um, but a dark horse, I would say, is Carlton Lingard, just because he's probably starting at a very – at a lower uh, platform or lower base than some of the other uh, players that they recruited and signed. Um, very raw in his ability. Someone that, you know, still has a lot of growing up to do, probably both on and off the court. So – but – if we're, and he has a longer ways to go to reach his potential, but if we're just talking potential, there may not be someone in this class that has the same kind of upside that Carlton Lingard has. So as a dark horse, Carlton Lingard could end up having the best career just because his ceiling of potential might be higher than anyone else's. But I think when you consider everything that goes into it, I think Nigel Pack is still the best answer. I think that's, I think that's a good pick, especially with a Bruce Weber team. It's usually smart to go with a guard, and that's why I think Nigel and Selton, the two good two guys you featured the most are the two guys I think of at first. Um, and then Carlton is another guy I thought of as that third option. I think one other guy I did forget to mention, uh, I'll throw his name out there, is a Rudy Williams as another newcomer who could uh, do big things. But I would stick with either Nigel, but I'm going to take 
if I have to pick one, a Celta Miguel. I think he does have the best career. It's like a lot of what you said. I think he comes in right away as the best player in the class. I think he could even come in. And I know this is bold to say. I mean, especially with how many minutes this guy got and his, his potential too. But Celta Miguel could be better than Dejuan Gordon. It might not be a right away type of thing, but he has possibly, you know, the potential there. He's not quite as long and stuff like that. But he, I think, is a little more skilled when it comes to shot making and ability, um, especially off the bounce. But Dejuan does a, a, a multitude of other things really great. But I think Celta Miguel could be that offensive guy for you for the next four years and put up a huge, great career. Because that's the thing. If he comes in as the best player right away in the class, then you're talking about and he, and he even just progresses just ever so slightly. I think that would put together – a really great career. I think you brought it up. Nigel could be used like a Barry Brown. I think Celta Miguel is another guy that could be used a lot like a Barry Brown, a slasher, a guy who's going to be the playmaker for you, make sure you get the bucket when you need it. Um, he's, you know, it's like you said, too, he's physically already ready, especially that's one thing that makes you think he could probably have a better freshman season than what Dejuan had this past season. Dejuan's stringy. Uh, coach said it time and time again, he needs to put on weight before he really, really, really can compete at this level. Selton's already got that weight put on. He'll continue to get bigger when he gets here, stronger. And I think he can turn, um, you know, those first few seasons into a great career. If he's not, you know, he could be a player. If he, do, if he blows up big enough where he could be out the door in two or three years. But, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, but if he does stay four years, um, if him and Nigel, I think it's, it's going to be a great duo, those two, seeing them go for four years. But I would say Selton slightly ends up with a better career than Nigel. Yeah, I, I still believe that over the course of four years, the edge probably ends up going to Nigel Peck. But I also do agree with the sentiment that you provided there that I, I, and I don't know that it'll all be, be all that close in this. I think – Celta Miguel would definitely be a better true freshman than Dejuan Gordon was. Yeah. Just because of the physical maturity and the physical preparedness. Mm -hmm. um, not sure when the last time they had a guard, you know, this ready to contribute in that way from a physical standpoint. It's some of the things that uh, really caused Dejuan to m maybe not ascend himself up the, up the ladder of improvement the way that some may thought he would his, his true freshman year. Um, that and maybe uh, not having some of the skills that w one would have assumed he did. I do think Dejuan is someone that's going to – has the potential. We'll see if the pandemic, you know, yep. time off changes anyone's road to improvement. But with that notwithstanding, I think Dejuan Gordon was probably – in line to have one of the bigger jumps from year one to year two. With that being said, yeah, I think Celta Miguel probably has a better freshman year than uh, Dejuan Gordon did. Mm -hmm. um, still think Dejuan Gordon probably has more potential yep. uh, in terms of ceiling, how much better he can be. And I would pr say the same thing about Nigel Pack, which is why I tend to think Nigel is uh, the answer for this particular question. Mm -hmm. Now, do does Nigel – start right away I think with the exit of David Sloan I don't think that's a question at this point I think that also makes the answer pretty easy it, it does it does make it a little different because yeah that's the that's the thing I think I would say Nigel does start right away um, yeah I, I mean right Rudy now. Williams they they added but I don't know that they necessarily added him to start I think they maybe added him to be the depth piece for Nigel exactly well because David Sloan you know I mean respect to him he was a great guy but he left the program knowing because because coaches couldn't guarantee a starting spot for him, knowing that Nigel's going to be there to compete. And now they went out and got a guy like Rudy Williams, another JUCO point guard, who knows he's not going to come in and, and start right away, but has a chance to compete for it. Um, and that just allows you know for more, for more uh, I think, a better team building. Um, whereas David, you know, he wanted to come in as you know, and I think he's fair to say this. You know, he sat behind. Um, he sat behind some guys this past season before he was able to get his spot with Cardi and all the things going on with that. But um, I think Rudy Williams will have an opportunity, but I agree. I think Nigel Pack takes that over, but I still think Celta Miguel, I'm, I'm going to talk about their mentals too a little bit. I think Celta Miguel, his mentality on the court will instantly help him. Um, I do think 
it's, I think these, the mentals of all three of these guys really complement each other and Nigel Pack, uh, Celta Miguel, and Dejuan Gordon. Dejuan Gordon, he came in as a freshman, very humble, but still talked amongst the team. I think he's going to be a future leader for sure, if, not, if he's not already. Um, but it didn't, it didn't um, get taken straight to the court with his skill set. Whereas I think Selton, I think his mindset, he's a little less humble than what a Dejuan is, maybe a little less of a team you know, leader in the locker room as that goes. But on the floor, he has the ability to take over with that mental. And then Nigel, I think he's the best of both worlds. I think he's a very humble guy in himself, which is very good for the point guard position, but he also can go get you a bucket. So Nigel is very, very interesting. I think it's, it's, it's going to be interesting in their careers as we watch them go through because I do think it's going to be a close photo finish, as you say. But, um, but I, I, I think I'll, I'll take something just a, just, a, just a touch, just a touch over <laughs> no, I get it. I, I guess the question I was kind of leading you into, is there a chance that Nigel Pack has a better chance of being a four-year starter at this point than Celta Miguel? Because uh, that, that could help. I think he does. I think that is the good answer to say he does, because if we're looking at the roster right now, um, let's say Nigel Pack starts over Rudy Williams. I mean, let's, let's try to figure out where Celta would start right away. Who knows? We got Dejuan. He's for sure starting. Mike is probably 100% for sure starting as a senior. So that's three right there, and you're probably not going to start Selton at the four. I mean, you'd rather have him come off the bench, I would think, especially with now the nice piece of depth you have at the big man position. Um, so who's I, the four and five? What's that? Who's the four and five? I'd say the four and five's got to be Easy Agu at, at the five and then Montavious Murphy at the four. Yeah, that'll pro- I could see that being the lineup. And, then, and if that is the lineup – then it's a, you hard pressed to maybe make uh, Selton a starter, which would make my answer the better one of Nigel Pack being what? the better. No doubt. no doubt, because that's the thing that's going to come down to though. Is I could see Mike though being a guy who says, you know what, I'm seeing the Celtic guy. Holy cow! Like I'll come off the bench. I'll be the sixth man. But I don't know. Who knows? But then again, also Selton could be the kind of guy who's that perfect sixth man to come off and take yeah. that guy. So. You're probably looking at a six man, maybe a Mike or, or Selton in in that scenario. Or if they commit to the entire small ball thing, you can put Selton in there with Mike and Dejuan and Nigel and McMonte Murphy the five. Five. I like that lineup. I think sometimes they'll have to go with that lineup, especially when teams. Yeah, that's probably not. Yeah, probably not a lineup that starts, but a lineup that'll probably be, probably be on the floor together. Yep, especially. I mean. Love X, but now the X is leaving. It opens up all sorts of different options because you have a bunch of young guys who are not promising any position to anyone. Um, and so I think it's going to work out good for K-State. Yep. But, yeah, wrap it up. this is a good, deba- good first debate series for us, I think, right? Yeah, I agree. I'm so, right. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep these coming every Sunday. Uh, recruiting I Rob- got the dub. What's that? I got the dub. You got the dub, sure, fine. Nigel wins. Nigel wins. Love you, Selton, but uh, you guys are going to be a great duo together. <sighs> I really won, though, guys. But anyway. Catch us next week, and hopefully Matt Hall will be on the show. That would be fun, wouldn't it? And also catch us another time this week with the recruiting roundup coming out Tuesday, right? Yep. All right. Absolutely. Love you, D.Y. Bye, guys. Tell your friends. See you later. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs>